Very good. We completed the first part of our simulation. Now we can move on to the simulation of fire and smoke. As we saw at the beginning of the course, we have to add the domain to the simulation. So, let's add a cube. Position and scale it in order to be placed where the simulation will take place. Remember to apply the scale by pressing Ctrl and A and selecting Scale. Then, go to the Physic Properties tab, select the Fluid button and choose Domain as Type. You should also set the path of the cache folder, otherwise Blender will use a default path for the cache. Now we have to set all the asteroid fragments as fluid. Select the first object, assign the fluid property, and set its type as flow. Also, set the flow type as fire and smoke. Finally, set the flow behavior to inflow. Now we have to copy this modifier to the other fragments. As usual, select this object in the outliner, and shift-click the last one. In this way, we select all the objects, and the first becomes the active one. In order to copy a modifier, we'll take advantage of an add-on named, Copy Attributes. Go to the add-ons menu, and check that it was installed. Now, press Ctrl and C, and click on, Copy Selected Modifiers. Then, select the Fluid Modifier. This modifier will be copied to the other objects. However, for some reason, not all the properties of the modifier were copied. So, with all the objects still selected, right-click on the properties we changed before and choose, Copy to Selected. The properties were Flow Type and Flow Behavior. Now, if you start the simulation, a lot of fire and smoke are emitted from the asteroid. Each asteroid fragment is a flow source. So, when the asteroid breaks falling to the ground, each fragment will continue to emit fire and smoke. This is exactly what we want. In the following lessons, we will see how to adjust most of the parameters in order to have a good-looking simulation. In order to explain the other settings, we'll put aside for the moment our asteroid, and we'll take a look at specific examples. We already talked about the flow behavior property, but let's take a closer look at it. It represents the way the fluid is emitted. Inflow means that the object emits smoke continuously. On the other hand, geometry means that we only have the volume contained within the object. It is more useful for liquid simulation, for example a water glass, a liquid tank and so on. For example, this is a simulation where, on the left, we have a geometry emission, while on the right, the inflow type. In the geometry source, the total amount of smoke is the same as the volume of the emitter. Finally, outflow represents an object that subtracts smoke or liquid from the simulation, for example a sink drain, or a suction fan. For example, here on the left, we have an object that subtracts the smoke from the simulation. You can take advantage of this in order to control the global quantity of fluid inside a domain. In our case, we want fire and smoke to be continuously emitted. The sampling sub-steps property is useful for increasing the quality of the simulation. For example, when you have a fast-moving object. To better understand this, let's create a new file. Add a simple sphere and add the quick smoke effect. Now, animate the object so that it moves quickly along a curved path. You also have to scale the domain. I set the divisions to 128 in order to have a higher resolution. 
Starting the simulation, you can clearly see the gaps between the smoke generated in each frame. This because Blender has not enough information between each frame. So, let's increase the sub-steps value, for example 20. Remember to change the division's value, in order to reset the simulation. Now we have a much smoother animation, due to the fact that we increased the samples between the frames. So, remember. When you have a fast-moving emitter, it is better to increase the sub-steps value in order to have a smoother flow. The smoke color property may be useful when you want to animate the color of the smoke. Indeed, the global color of the smoke can be changed in the material of the smoke. But if you want to change the color at the emission level, you have to animate this property, as you can see in this example. When we have to deal with smoke and fire, one of the most important aspects that we need to consider, is the way and rate at which the smoke and flames move. This can dramatically change the energy of our simulation. We have many different ways to change the velocity and the direction of the fluid. Basically, as we already saw, the smoke and fire properties can be set both at domain and emitter level. When we change a property at the domain level, we are changing a particular behavior for all the fluid emitters inside it. And this is very useful when we want to globally change the look of the simulation. For example, here we have three emitters. If we change a property at domain level, we are changing the flow of all the emitters. We will see this in a moment. But we can also have different emitters, with different behaviors. And this is exactly what we did, changing the parameters at the emitter level. So, let's go back to our exercise, that is how to change the velocity and movement of our smoke or flames. Let's start by considering the properties we can change at the emitter level. The initial temperature attribute, refers to the temperature difference between the smoke and the domain. So, the higher the temperature, the faster the smoke rises. In this example, the emitter on the right has an initial temperature 10 times greater than the one on the left. But this parameter only affects the speed of the smoke upwards. If we want to set the exact direction of the smoke, we have to deal with the initial velocity property. This parameter is useful in two different situations. The first one is when we want to set an initial velocity, regardless the real physical forces in the simulation. For example, in this animation, I want the fire to flow from left to right, as if there was a wind. We can easily do that, by activating the initial velocity, and setting the proper value in one of the three axes. We also have the normal property. This refers to the velocity along the vertex normals of the object. In this example, it is clearly visible how the smoke also moves along the normal of the vertices. You can see the normals if you switch to the edit mode and in the viewport overlay menu, activate the display vertex normal option. In this example, the flow of the smoke is obviously too regular and symmetrical. But if you have a more complex object, this can add some variation in the movement of the fluid. There is another situation where the initial velocity property is useful when we have a moving fluid emitter. The source velocity means that Blender adds the velocity of the emitter to the movement of the smoke. In this example, on the left we don't have any initial velocity. The smoke is generated in the position of the emitter in each frame. On the right, the smoke has an additional velocity from the movement of the emitter. 
So, this can be useful to add more realism to the simulation. This example is also interesting to see how to add multiple domains in a simulation. In order to do that, you have to specify which flow emitters belong to each domain. First of all, you have to create a collection of emitters for each domain. In this case, Fluid1 and Fluid2. Then in the domain properties, you have to select the right collection for each domain. In this way, each domain bakes the right flow. Very good. The next step is to see how to change the flow direction and movement at the domain level. This is useful when we want to change the behavior of all the emitters inside the same domain. The first property to consider is the buoyancy density parameter. This refers to the tendency of the fluid to go upwards or downwards. Do not confuse this with the density parameter in the flow properties, which represents how thick the smoke is. In this example we have three domains with different buoyancy density parameters. Remember to set three different collections for the flow sources. Also, if you want to bake the simulation, as we'll see later, you have to set three different cache folders. In the first domain, we have the default value of 1. In the middle, there is a greater value, and as a result the smoke has a lower physical density. In this way, it moves up faster. In the last domain, there is a negative value. This means that the flow has a higher density than the surrounding environment. This causes the smoke to move downward. The next parameter is the heat. It is in some way similar to the temperature property we saw in the flow object. Indeed, higher values cause the smoke to rise higher. This can also be useful when we have different flow in a single domain, and we want to globally multiply the flow speed of smoke. Here we have three domains with higher heat values from left to right. The last parameter in this group is the vorticity one. It adds some turbulence and rotation to the smoke flow. Another important parameter we have to consider is the noise property. As the name suggests, it adds some noise to the flow. But this property is also useful for another reason. Indeed, it is generally used to add some fine details to the smoke and fire flow. For example, let's consider this simulation. This is an interesting example, as I will show you many others properties related to fluid simulations. First of all, I created three domains and the related flow sources. As we already saw, you have to create a collection for each of the sources. Then we have to correctly manage the cache of each simulation. We have already talked about this topic, but it's time to take a closer look. Basically, you have three ways to play a simulation. The default one is the replay type in the cache tab. This simply means that the simulation is computed when you play the animation. The result is stored in the RAM of your PC. So, if I start the simulation, it is computed in real time. However, if you close the Blender file and open it again, the simulation is lost, and it has to be computed again. This is the reason why we can also store the simulation data to disk. Indeed, the other two types, all and modular, store the simulation data in the hard drive in the path that you can set here. The all type means that all the components of the simulation 
for example the smoke, noise, or the fluid mesh data, are computed at the same time. This is the type that we can set for the first domain. In order to compute the simulation, you simply have to press the Bake All button. The simulation is cached on disk, so that you can easily play it even when you reopen the Blender file. The other type is the modular one. This means that each component of the simulation is computed separately. So, in the second and third domain, where we also have the noise component, as we'll see in a moment, I set the modular type. It is also important to check the is resumable property. This ensures that you can stop and then resume the baking process. In this way, as a first step, we can bake the general simulation. Move upwards and click the Bake Data button. Then, we can also bake the noise component by pressing the Bake Noise button. This is useful, as we can change or fine-tune only this particular property, in this case the noise, and bake again only it. Now we can go back to our noise simulation test. In the second domain, I activated the noise parameter and set the strength value to zero. In this way, Blender only adds some details to the simulation without any additional noise. The extra detail is defined by the uppers factor. As we can see, in the second domain, there is more detail and resolution compared to the first one. This is exactly what I said at the beginning of the lesson, that is to activate the noise property as a way to increase the fine details of the simulation. In the last domain, I also increased the strength value. This is what this parameter is supposed to do, which is to add turbulence to the simulation. So, let's also bake this domain. In the center of each domain, you've surely noticed a moving arrow. This is a force field and, in this particular case, a wind force. It is important to know that you can add real forces to a simulation. In order to do that, go to the Add menu and choose one of the force field's objects. In order to add some power to the simulation, I animated the direction and strength of the wind. I also set a fall-off distance so that the wind only acts in a defined range. If you want each wind to affect only a specific domain, you have to create three different collections, as we already did for the emitters. Then, we have to assign each collection to the related domain. So, in the field effector collection, choose the right collection for each domain. Very good. We have seen most of the properties we need to complete the simulation of our asteroid. In the next lessons, we'll go back to our initial simulation in order to add the last details.